Hi, my name is Bruno and I'm a technical educator at the Web3 Foundation. Today I'm going to talk to you about root origins or root calls. As you might know, Polkadot and Kusama are blockchains based on the Substrate framework. The Substrate framework is a framework for building blockchains from scratch in as little as 30 minutes. We have plenty of tutorials on Substrate.io if you want to check it out and get started by building your own blockchains. In traditional blockchains, when you want to upgrade a blockchain, when you want to change its functionality, you would typically have to uh, do what's called a hard fork. A hard fork is when you build a new program, the, the, when, you, when you compile a new program that people run, that people use to run your blockchain, and then you make them all upgrade it. Then you make them all replace their old version with your new version. Anybody who doesn't replace their uh, old version with your new version will stay on an outdated fork of the chain. And this is why it's called a hard fork. They will remain incompatible with the new fork that is now canonical, that is now considered the official chain, and they will be out of sync with the chain until they upgrade their software as well. So this is quite awkward to do when you have a global, uh, globally spanning network of anonymous users, right? And substrate-based chains have solved this problem through a very neat trick. And that trick is that substrate-based chains read the logic about um, read the logic that tells them how to process blocks from the chain that they're processing itself. So when we have a substrate-based chain, we have the logic that tells blocks how to uh, that tells the the software how to build blocks on the chain. And when you need to do an upgrade, all you have to do is upgrade that logic on the chain. All the nodes that are running the chain will download that logic and follow the new rules. You don't actually have to change your program or stop it or download a new version and replace it. You just keep running your old version and it'll just automatically download the new code from the chain and keep running it. Of course, you can change your uh, software as well. This will give you a performance boost because this code that is built into the software itself is always faster than whatever the node downloads from the chain, but the code is identical. So the only gain here is performance indeed. Now, substrate-based chains um, are also quite uh, dangerous to change this way because if you let just anybody upload any custom code to your chain they're liable to break it and of course you're opening yourself to vulnerabilities to various attacks and so on so the only entity that is allowed to execute these code changes on the chain is called the root entity um, when you submit any kind of extrinsic and extrinsic means um, input from outside of the chain when you submit any kind of extrinsic into a substrate based chain you're doing so from an origin. You are the origin of that extrinsic. But some extrinsics can only be submitted by the root origin, the admin origin, the administrator origin. So root is equal to administrator here. If somebody who has the permission to do these root calls executes these calls, then the calls will go through. If somebody who does not have this permission tries the same, their, their extrinsic will be rejected. In Substrate, you can do this in two ways. You can have a module in your chain called the sudo module. The sudo module might sound familiar because it inherits the name from a Mac OS operating system and the Linux operating system, where the sudo command means super user do, and that translates to I'm an admin, do what I say. So the sudo palette or the sudo module in a substrate based chain allows you to have a single key that acts as the administrator of that chain. And that single key, that single wallet can execute these special root only calls. Um, this is quite a power to give to a single individual, but is very, very useful in young chains that need to uh, iron out their bugs and upgrade quickly before it's time to transition to the other method, which is democracy. Democracy is yet another module, a palette, that you include in your substrate-based chain. And in democracy, token holders of your chain can vote for changes on that chain. One such change is actually changing of the logic, changing of the source code of the chain, changing of the block processing logic. So that's the same thing that, would, that the pseudo module would do.
when a simple user of the blockchain, a regular user of the blockchain, submits a change to the system's code, then that change has to be has to have a supermajority of yes votes in order to pass. And as the turnout approaches um, 100%, so as more and more tokens come into play and vote, uh, that ratio uh, re is reduced to 51%. If there's 51% yes votes, then that proposal will pass. But as long as the turnout is low, and it usually is, is in, in blockchains, in blockchain voting, then the, there is um, a supermajority requirement where a lot more eyes are needed than nay votes. The outcome of that democ democratic vote will be the same as in the pseudo module, and as, as in the pseudo palette. So the same root origin call will be executed only after an enactment delay. It will have a cooldown after the vote so that uh, other people can still react and undo that change if something if they found something wrong in that period. But essentially after that timeout, the same pseudo call will get executed only this time through democracy. And uh, so th this is this is how you decentralize a chain. A chain will usually start by having a pseudo module where a single key can do these upgrades um, in in a very rapid fashion, so that bugs can be eliminated. And when the, um, the 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 people behind the project are sure that there are no mission critical bugs in the chain that they are developing, then they will remove the pseudo palette, the pseudo module from the chain, so that this functionality doesn't even exist anymore. And they will put in the democracy palette where people can vote for such changes in the future, thereby making change much slower but far more decentralized than up until that point. And this is how root origin calls work. You have a origin that is a root and that root will be either the pseudo module or the democracy palette and they will be able they will be the only ones able to submit this highly sensitive code change upgrades to the chain. Uh, if you're watching this video before Polkadot mainnet has launched, one of the phases of Polkadot's launch is actually the pseudo phase, where the pseudo module will still be enabled so that we can um, dynamically fix any critical bugs that we find, so we can rapidly patch them and make sure that the chain keeps chugging along. As soon as we're sure that there are no critical bugs left in the system, we will remove the pseudo module and, re and instate the democracy module so that so that we put the, the fate of the chain, so to speak, into the hands of the people, into the hands of the dot holders. And from that moment on, the dot holders will decide what happens with the chain through the democracy module and through their votes. I hope this, ha this video has cleared up some um, misconceptions and confusions, confusions you may have had about the pseudo module and the pseudo phase of Polkadot's launch. And I hope to see you there in democracy, uh, voting and participating in the evolution of our chain.